So now in this video we're going to do a test of the internal thermal overload protection of the 7805. So you're going to see I uh, quickly raise the voltage. It's holding 5 volts across the load until it starts overheating. So when you see uh, current uh, starting to go down, that's when it's starting to overheat. It seems to really kick in at the 25 volts as we work our way up there. So you can see the LED getting dimmer, there's less current. Um, that's just a way that it... Uh, keeps itself from overheating from generating more heat and uh, it limits how much power that it produces and I'm not sure exactly how low we would have to go for some reason when you lower the voltage all of a sudden it lets a lot more current go through and then it realizes it's overheating and it starts limiting uh, current again not sure how low we have to go uh, looks like it might be doing all right uh, about this point here so in any case we're going to compare this with uh, the same component that has a heat sink. So these are different manufacturers and so that, that may play a little part but for the most part it's going to be the heat sink there that uh, makes the difference. Oh also so the heat sink goes to the metal tab and it's still hot from my earlier testing. Goes to that metal tab on the back there and uh, so this is electrically connected to this middle pin right there. The metal tab and the middle pin are the same connection. So we got to make sure that uh, whatever we touch with the uh, heat sink there is the same thing that's touching the middle pin. Okay, so, and when it's to ground, it holds five volts between those two points there. Or it's always five, point, uh, five volts between those two points. But right now it's five volts in relationship to ground. So we have uh, the current, let's go up to uh, 30 volts right there. And you're going to see it's going to take a while before it cools down. Or, I mean, before it starts lowering the current, not cooling down. But uh, that's the way it helps prevent itself from overheating. And if I blow on it or something, it's going to take a little longer. Um, you can blow air on these heat sinks. That helps cool them off uh, quicker. But uh, there you can see it's taking a little while. Um, but it uh, should be any time now soon. It will start lowering. So you can see how much better it was doing than the one without the heat sink right there. So with the heat sink, it takes uh, takes longer to get to the different uh, voltage extremes. So there you can see, it's uh, going down. So I'm not sure, oops, I definitely did not want to uh, lower it by tens. Uh, but the main thing is you had that internal protection and uh, so at, uh, at 15 volts, I, I didn't see it go down when, when I waited a while. Let's, uh, let's try 20, see how we do. Now that we worked our way up, maybe it will do a little bit better. Um, but uh, these components have the internal protection. Most components that come in the TO220 package like this do not have that internal protection. Make sure you look at the data sheet and see that you have it. But uh, as far as I know, only the 7800 and 7900 series integrated circuits, which come in this TO220 package that a lot of transistors come into. Um, as far as I know, this is the only component that has that uh, protection circuitry. I have op amps that limit how much current comes out of the output. And uh, I tested that in an earlier video, but uh, this is... Uh, one of the few heats. Okay, so at 20 volts, at some point it will it will go down. So maybe uh, 15 volts. That's the test you could do if uh, you're not sure. But uh, luckily, you can actually do this test. Actually heat them up, and they'll protect themselves if they get too hot. You can tell they start lowering the current that they're outputting. Whereas other components, you just learn the hard way. You fry them and realize, oh, that was too much power. 